Hi, Bob. So a lot of you guys know Storm. This is my two-year-old Blue Nose American Bully. She's a female. And today we're going to go over some tips for what to do when you're bringing a new puppy home. Now, she's obviously not a puppy anymore, but we get the question a lot. So that's what we're going to do today. So I get this question a lot through like email or DMs. And if you guys have any questions, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll base my videos. Like I won't answer some of these questions through email or direct mail. But if you leave like a certain question that maybe I think I can make a video about it, I'll answer the question through a video. So this is from Malik. I think that's how you say his name, I'm not sure. But he asked me about what are some things that you would need when you bring home your first puppy. So, I mean, I've done videos like this before, but they're a little bit out of date. So, you know, I figured it wouldn't hurt to redo it. Storm is two years old now, like I said, outside. And uh, she, you know, I have been through a bunch of different things getting her when she was a puppy. And, and I've had like a couple of different dogs that I've raised. So, so yeah, she's my fourth pit bull. So I've done this a few times. So we're gonna go through some of the basic things. Uh, and it's not really gonna get you know too crazy. You don't overthink it. This is real simple. And so let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna want to do when you're getting a puppy is actually get a puppy, right? Because <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. But a lot of people, oh, you're so heavy nowadays. A lot of people, uh, you know, they, they get over intimidated and they don't actually end up getting a dog. So just go get the dog, you know? But some of the things that uh, you're gonna need is number one is a cage. So there's different types of cages you can get. I went with the smaller one, which is over here now, and I use it to block her from going upstairs. And then she has her bigger one, which is here. So uh, if I was you, honestly, I would go with the bigger one because they'll grow into it and you can, they come with the divider. So make sure you get the one with the divider. And she's gonna drink water right while I'm filming. You done? Dripping water all over the floor out of your mouth? <laughs> so, yeah, you can get the divider. And, uh, you know, I put some blankets in there. She likes the blankets. Not really a huge deal if you put the pad in there or whatever you wanna put. You don't wanna get the cage too big because then they'll have accidents in there. Uh, so make sure there's enough room where they can maneuver, but not enough room where they can poop or do an accident on the other side of it and not be not and they can then they then they'll they won't have a, a chance to lay in it so part of you know they, they won't they don't want to poop or pee where they're where they have to lay you know so if there's too much room in there they're going to do it and just lay on the other side so make sure you you get one that's you know just get the divider that's what i do so the next thing is bedding so i leave so she's allowed to go in and out of her cage throughout the day right she could go in and out, she can do whatever. She's not allowed on the couch. So the trick that I do with the couch is I just put tin foil. I have tin foil back here, right? And I just lay that across and it'll keep, it'll keep the dog off the couch. They don't like the sound of it, look. She just, she can't stand it. She wants nothing to do with it. So if you lay that across the cushions, they won't, they won't get up on the couch. And then after a while, um, you know, they just won't go up there. She's allowed on the couch when I'm here though. So that's the thing. Like I don't mind her being on the couch. It's not when I'm not here. Cause she'll like start eating the cushion and just being a pain in the butt. So anyway, uh, bedding. She has a nice little spot back down here where she can hang out behind the TV. This is a really nice bed, uh, for dogs. It's a, uh, canine dog beds. I don't know, but this is her favorite spot. This is pretty much where she goes. Uh, all day. It's nice and cool back here. She gets under there through the here and uh, That's how she gets back in there. So a couple of different spots For the dog to go and hang out, you know, you don't just want to limit them to one spot So she isn't allowed upstairs when I'm not home. She's up there now. Look at her Hi bud <laughs> She takes advantage of it when, when I'm here so I, I blocked this off. So one thing you might want to look into getting is maybe like some kind of baby gate or like dog gate or something like that. Uh, just to limit the space of the puppy in the house. You don't want to overwhelm your new puppy with like a gigantic apartment or like, you know, 
if you have a bigger house, you don't want to, you just want to limit their space to maybe the living room, maybe a playpen at first, and then expose them slowly to the rest of the house. So, because what will happen is, like, if you expose, if you expose the puppy right away to like everything in the house, they can get overwhelmed and they can develop like anxiety from that. And you know, you just you just want to make it as easy as you possibly can for the puppy. So you don't, you know, for for a house like this, I would just limit her to down here, and or you know, if she was a puppy. Uh, and then maybe, I would actually maybe even do a playpen at first down here and then, you know, open it up more as maybe a month goes by to like the downstairs and then eventually the whole house. Hi bud, come on, come up here, this is a video for you. Uh, another thing that is pretty important is a dog bowl and dog dish. So the one I use over here, I'm gonna get one that's, for a puppy I guess you don't want to get one that's uh, too much or whatever, but eventually, you want to get these ones that are elevated. So this one will go down low. So this is the why I like this one a lot. It'll go down low. So if you have a puppy and then they get older, you can raise it up. So it's pretty good. Um, this will eliminate strain on their neck and on their back and, and uh, stuff like that. So you don't want the, the dog having to hunch down to drink water or get food. So dog bowl and dog dish, really important. It's like the obvious number one thing you're, you're probably going to need besides the cage. So, and then bedding. You just make sure the dog has plenty of places to go and hide and, you know, make their own little space and stuff like that. And that way you don't have to deal with them like going on the couch or going on the bed or something like that. So make their own space and use that crate as a training tool as well. Like you don't want to use it as a disciplinary tool. Make it a place of comfort for the dog. And in my old video, I have a way to introduce your dog to the cage. You don't just want to throw them in there and say, this is where you are now. You just kind of want to leave the cage open, let them sniff it out, let them walk around it, let them go in and out of it for a little while, and then, you know, get, get used to it like that. Like, you're kind of like you're acclimating a fish to a fish tank. You don't just throw them in the fish tank. You know, you got to slowly dump water in the bag while the water is in the bag, in the water. Like, you know what I mean? So, you got to kind of do the same thing with dogs. It's that same kind of concept. Acclimate them slowly to their new environment. So, um, <clears throat> another thing, like most, so most breeders will send you home with a little bit of food, whatever their feet. <laughs> most, <laughs> she's gonna drink the water every time I start talking. So most breeders will give you a little bit of food, whatever they're feeding their, their dog, the puppies. Uh, they'll send you home like maybe like a week supply of that. So whatever you decide you wanna feed your dog, make sure you have that on hand, you know? Because what you're gonna wanna do is start slowly don't, uh, mixing that in with whatever food you want to give your dog. So, you know, you're not just going to switch foods. You'll make the dog sick, especially a puppy. They're not used to it. Their stomachs aren't fully developed yet. They develop very quickly, but not that quickly, okay? So even a full-grown dog, you can't just switch their food like that. You have to slowly introduce the new food to the old one, and then eventually you just start giving it to them. So, uh, I would say, you know, start out with like a, you know, a cup, a half a cup mixed in with whatever your, you know, your food that the breeder gave you. Uh, mix that in for about a week and then slowly more and more and then eventually until it's ran out. Then you start giving your dog whatever food you decide. I give Storm Virus. That's what she gets. I'll leave a link below. It's, in my opinion, the best dog food you can get. It's fully made in America. Uh, and there's no, uh, it's not like outsourced to like, the, like a lot of food will say made in America and that's true, it's made in America, but the ingredients that's in it is not. Virus dog food is, it's one of the only ones that do that. So moving on, the next thing, uh, treats. So food and treats is an obvious thing because treats are gonna need to, to have plenty of treats, smaller ones, because uh, you're gonna use those as training tools for your dog, you're gonna need plenty of treats. Everything they do good, treat you know everything that they do you know everything that you're you're constantly training this puppy you know so treats you make sure you have treats and uh food and those are probably the most important you know it's one of the most important things you're going to need <clears throat> all these things are the most important things you're going to need obviously that's why i'm making a video but she just wants to play rope 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 daddy play rope with me play rope with me Let's talk about collars and leashes. So obviously you're gonna need a collar and a leash for your dog. Uh, these are things that you're gonna wanna get immediately at the pet store. So like this, you should be making a list right now of these things like the cage, dog and food dish, a dog bed, food, treats, and now we're moving on to a leash and a collar. So you don't have to get 
this super expensive one that she has. This is from K9 Tactical Gear. This is very expensive. This thing's like $130, but it is the best dog collar you can get. You're not gonna get this right away. Okay, you're not gonna do you're not gonna spend that kind of money because the dog's not gonna grow into it. After about a year, then I'd say go ahead and get the canine uh, big dog collar. Um, and her leash is the same deal. It's a frog, it's very expensive, but it is the best dog collar and leash setup you can get. Uh, one thing you're gonna, don't forget to get when you get your uh, dog collar and leash is a poop bag that attaches to the leash, okay? This is vitally important because you will forget poop bags every time you walk out of the house. Every time you walk out of the house, you're gonna go, shit, I forgot the poop bags, and that's just rude. Um, you know, don't be that person. So poop bags are always in there. Uh, it's always attached to the leash, it doesn't move. So therefore, every time I walk the dog, I have the poop bags, right? So this is pretty cool, it has a little carabiner on it. So when your dog's a puppy, you know, you might wanna look into this. Uh, it'll keep, you wanna keep your leash always attached, like right here. And that'll keep your dog always around you. You know what I'm saying? So it'll, it'll get her, him, used to being with you and around you. Uh, I'm not gonna get into leash training or any of that. I do have videos on it. So you can check those out. I'll leave them all linked below. I'll leave all the videos linked below of anything I mentioned. But uh, yeah, so a leash, a collar, one of those things that you definitely need to get. Uh, whether you go for something like, we have a whole collection of stuff here. Here's, so whether you wanna get something like a harness like this, not a big deal, not a huge fan of these when they're puppies because they tend to pull a little bit too much, but they, they're not too bad, okay? If maybe you're, some dogs pull, some dogs don't. It all depends on how you train them. She was a little bit of a puller, and then I got her break, breaking that pretty quickly. But, uh, you know, we were using this a lot when she was doing hiking and stuff like that. So we do, we do still use this, but, oh, we don't use this anymore, but a type of thing for hiking that we use is the Easy Dog Hike Bag, and we go, we do a lot of hiking. Now, this is more advanced stuff. You don't need that. I'm just showing you guys but uh so for a collar just get just get your new puppy something simple just a regular collars you can get you know these are really nice ones from wolfgang uh wolfgang man and beast you don't have to get these super duper nice ones like this but you get the idea just these quick really simple buckly ones that are real small for puppies uh, make sure you get the tag with your phone number and your address on there and the dog's name okay uh get your dog chipped Right away, instantly get your dog chipped. I think that's a really big important thing to get. Uh, so that's it for leashes and collars. Here's actually her puppy harness. This is her puppy harness. I save all this stuff just in case somebody gets a puppy or I get another puppy. Now I don't have to buy this stuff over again. So this is how small Storm was at some point. I mean, God, she was such a tiny little dog. In. <laughs> you remember that? That's you. That's you, babies. So when you're introducing your dog to these collars and leashes, just let them do this, what I'm doing right here. Let them sniff it. Let them sniff it. I know, baby. Uh, this is a pretty cool one, too. This is like a bungee thing from One Tigris. This is one of my favorite collar leashes. So there's all different kinds of leashes you can get, um, but a leash is definitely one of those things where you're gonna need to walk your dog and you know keep control of your dog as well. Like, if the dog's getting out of hand, don't be afraid to grab that collar, you know, and hey, get over here, you know, they'll, they'll listen. Now, she just dropped one of her most favorite toys, which took her every part of almost two years to destroy this thing. She's had this Kong ball for two years, and look at it. She's due for a new one. I think we're going to go, you want to go get a new toy? Uh, yeah, she's got to get a new one of these. Look at this thing. But a Kong ball, I mean, if not the best dog toy ever created. It's, you know, I get the extra large ones for her. I believe actually this is a large. She's gonna get extra large this time. But they're expensive, but they last a really long time. So get your dog a wide variety of toys. She has, this is the Wooba. I st this is where that Kong ball, I believe, was inside this. Actually, there, there was a cheaper version of a Kong in here, and she destroyed that one quickly. But that black one, she hasn't been able to... Stop, Mama. Alice, good girl. Uh, she hasn't been able to uh, get get this thing torn up. She loves this thing, and it, it doesn't get all over the place like some of the ropes will. The three toys that I do with my dog is a hard bone like this with stuff in the middle, a rope toy, a Kong, and then the Kong Wubba. And come on up, come on, come on. 
up here, look. And the Kong Wubba. So I know a lot of people are against the ropes. Uh, if your dog starts swallowing rope, that's bad. It'll get all in her intestines. It can really do a lot of damage. She does not. She just kind of tears it apart and spits it everywhere, which can be a problem for your vacuum cleaner and just make your house look like a mess in general. So usually when it starts to fray up too bad, I throw it out and get her a new one. But generally it takes her quite some time to, to do that. <laughs> Hi, Baba. <laughs> I love this dog so much. Uh, so yeah, a good variety of, of dog toys that those are the three things I get for at least Pipples now like those little stuffed squeaky toys and stuffed balls that squeak and all that stuff like that You know, she just destroys them and instantly like if I get her a stuffed toy of any sort It's gonna be all over the house instantly. She's a pit bull. They tear they rip they have very strong jaws and all dogs do don't believe this myth that only Pipples have the strongest of jaws. They don't have some extra strength jaw or something. All dogs can use this jaw very very effectively. Um, but pit bulls just have something on there. They like to, uh, with their neck, they like to, uh, you know, rip, rip, rip. They just love it. They love to pull and rip and just use that neck strength. Come here. They just, look here. get up here. Show everyone. Good girl. Okay, so I think that's about it. That's pretty much it, guys. That's all I got for this one. Uh, we have a mess of dog stuff everywhere. <laughs> Welcome to that YouTube life. Yeah, guys, so good luck with your new dog, Malik. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Leave in the comments if you have any questions, have any video ideas, and that's it. I love you all. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace. You know discipline your dog with the cage because they will never do this they will never go in there to just relax that's her little house that's her little place of comfort she wants to take a nap she's gonna hang out while I'm making this video and she's just gonna take a little nap and if she wants and gets uncomfortable she's gonna go in there and take a nap and hang out in her little other little dog bed so have plenty of little places like that for your dog to go and hang out. Don't use the cage as a disciplinary tool because they will never do that.